talking with the experts. Episode 264 with Ellen Stevens. That's it. And I've got a free course that I can give to everybody as well as a as a uh, thank you for having me on the, you know, the show here as well. But when I talked about the seven secrets, the first three was you have to know yourself before you can worry about reading anybody else. You need to know your personality. You need to know where your strengths are and how you get triggered when you're under stress. Once you know that, and then you can read the other person is the second step. Now you know their personality. And the third step is change the way that you like to be spoken to to match the way that they want to be and need to be spoken to. It's a case of uh, tuning your transmitter into their receiver. Because if you're talking at a different frequency, it's like you talking uh, French and the other person talking Greek, you're not going to understand each other. So you've got to tune yourself in. And the only way you can do that is you've got to know where you are on the world scale, first of all, know where they are, and then know how much do I change myself from talking the way I like to be spoken to, to match the way that that person does. Is it down this way or is it down that direction, depending where I am on that world scale? Welcome to Talking With The Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. My name is Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. I'm your host today. And my guest today is Alan Stevens, and we're going to be discussing building better relationships. Now, Alan for, uh, is, is a, an absolutely a wealth of knowledge in this area, and he is one of um, uh, one of many people who are building strong collaborations and teaching others to build ongoing relationships in all areas of their lives and building a network of switched on professionals focus on advocacy um, that he believes is a no brainer and as do I, that's why we get on so well. Because this is actually Alan's third go around on talking with the experts. So I am so thrilled that he's decided to come back. Alan believes that if you focus on your clients first and your profits second, then there becomes a, um, a much better connection uh, all around for everybody concerned. And uh, you may believe that that you give your clients great value and, and have a great business, but without first building those very strong relationships with your customers, clients and staff, you'll never get the opportunity to prove it, nor will your staff support you. Welcome, Alan, and thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thanks very much. I know we had a lot of fun the first two times around, and I expect this will be another re repeat of that. Absolutely, absolutely. And with last time um, we talked about um, the, the Campfire Project and the We Together Project, how are they going at the moment? Oh, pretty good. They're getting stronger and stronger. And I think one I've always uh, said to you that um, a leader's role is to make themselves redundant by raising other people up to do what they, they do as well, if not better than they can do it. Otherwise, you create a, a prison for yourself and you're not able to go out and do other things. If you're running a business, you can't uh, work on the business when you're working in it. So, and the Campfire Project is a perfect example of that. We've got some great people in there who have all stepped up. They've uh, started doing one-on-ones or Scott has been doing one-on-ones for several years now and panel discussions. We've got Facebook Lives happening. We've got collaborations. Angela Heiser has uh, really stepped up and uh, doing one-on-ones and she's been a massive support in the Campfire Project and just proving the hashtag we together. Yes, yeah, it's a great, great uh, concept, great project and uh, it, it's w well worth supporting and I encourage people to seek out the Campfire Project and become a member. It's um, it, it's a really safe space to, to be in and, uh, and you get to meet some really fabulous people. <laughs> Certainly do. I think uh, that's how Alan and I got together was through the Campfire Project or just a little bit before that started. But yeah, we've been friends for a very long time and um, Alan has just uh, celebrated a milestone birthday. So happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. 
Yes, uh, surprising enough, my 70th birthday. Oh, wow. That is a, a yeah, I've got a little bit way to go yet, but not far. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about building better relationships. How can we start to do that? We'll start perhaps with um, the workplace. Well, relationships all around, it always comes down to understanding the other person. Now, if you're uh, focusing on yourself, then you're not going to build a relationship. I always say to people, uh, We've got two eyes and two ears and one mouth. I know a lot of people say, oh, we've got two ears and one mouth and we should use them in that proportion. And I go, well, you've also got two eyes. And if you use them in that proportion, you are taking a lot more information. And when you are speaking, ask questions. My, um, one of my sons said to me one day, he said, well, how many questions do I ask? I said, every question you can think of and then one more. And he said, well, what do you mean one more? If I've asked all the questions I can think of, I said, very simply, after you've asked all the questions, you just say to the person, well, what I'm picking up is this, what I'm gathering is all of this. Have I got it right? That then allows that person from going from asking questions to really start an in-depth conversation. And yeah. the more you focus on the other person, the more that they uh, realise that you care and the stronger the uh, connection that you'll have with them. Yeah, I, I understand the concept, um, you know, very well. However, how can we get others within our team to to practice that? I mean, it's it's, it's okay for one person to do it in the mm. team, but you know, how can we get the whole team to be on the same boat? Well, if you think about, well, I'm a profiler, so I teach people how to read each other. But the thing before even that is that. We talk about being altruistic and helping people and everything else, but when we're stressed out, it always comes back to us. We're always wondering, well, how do I look after myself? Because I can't help anybody else until I'm okay. And understanding that this is the way we're wired. We focus on us. And that's why if I'm working with somebody, I'll say, look, if you focus on the other person, you're actually going to get what you want more than, uh, if, than uh, not get it. If you focus on just getting what you want, you won't get it. But if you focus on helping the other person get what they want, you will. As I call it, a return on, in, uh, on relationship will always give you the return on investment. But that's always, that, that should be the way anyway. You know, you mm. should give more than you receive, I believe. It doesn't matter in, in you know, whether it's in communication or, or otherwise. I think um, it, it, it makes for a better life, I think, if you give more than you, than you expect back in return. It, it happens that way. If you do that, then you'll always, you'll find that's an old giver's gain approach. The more people you can help get what they want, you'll always get what you want. But remember that we are human beings. We are emotional. And wherever we're under pressure, we feel that we, we don't belong or there's an issue going on and you know, people aren't really on our side. We will always look after ourselves. And so it always comes back to that self-protection. And that's where uh, a lot of the uh, you know, efforts in the workplace go awry because you know, people might go, yep, okay, we really need to pull together and they come in happy and uh, ready to do that. But if things aren't running away they, the way, along the lines that they were hoping it would, they'll start to pull back, there'll be distrust. And so understanding that you are going to get a bit of um, uh, pushback when you work with people because they're the same as us. Every person is an emotional being. And we have distrust. And if you distrust somebody, they will pick that energy up and they then will, in return, will distrust you as well. And then we turn around and we say, oh, I was right, wasn't I? And we go, no, you just created a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, that's quite true. Yes, you, you are right. We do tend to put emotion above everything else. And it, sometimes it's quite difficult not to use the emotion and push the emotion down when you know the, the situation becomes you know too stressful or too hot tempered or, or whatever it is it's just uh, you're right it's just a human reaction to to want to fight back I guess yeah and if we realize we have a look at our this is where we do look at ourselves and we go okay we've all got uh, issues there's four things when I look at profiling people I always tell everybody that everybody is suffering or has suffered everybody's wearing a mask everybody's pretending they're not wearing a mask. And most importantly, we are the sum of all of our childhood experiences and rewards. And so once we understand that, everybody's been through things at some point in their life. 
It just depends on how much we're going through at any given moment as to how we present ourselves to everybody else. Once we realize that everybody is emotional, we watch, this is where we do look at ourselves. We watch our own emotions, our responses to things, and then realize that, okay, other people are going through that as well. And if you start looking for that when you're talking to people, you realize that something's going on. You know that the interaction between you and them is not related directly to you. It can be from other events that have been happening around you. And the more you understand that, the more empathy you can have for the other person. And that's yeah, where we can really change our behaviors. Yeah, so we can really transfer all of that to a family situation or a personal situation, really, couldn't we? Yeah, well, in business, everyone talks about, you know, are we business to business or business to customer? Every interaction is human to human. That's what nobody, you know, a lot of people don't seem to realize. They think, oh, well, I've got to have a business relationship. Well, if you don't have good personal relationships, I guarantee your business relationships aren't going to be good either because businesses don't talk to businesses. People talk to people. Mm -hmm. And so once you realize that wherever you go out and have relationships, if they're not good in one area, they're going to translate into others. You know, what we feel at home, the issues going on there, we take that to work. We're emotional beings. I remember growing up and being told, oh, leave your emotions um, at home when you come to work. That's ridiculous. We can't. It's part of us. You know, we are the sum of all of our experiences. So once we realise that, we then uh, look at ourselves and say, okay, time to take the pressure off us. And if we take the pressure off, you know, if I take the pressure off me, then I can learn to take the pressure off other people and I can start to see them in a different light. Yeah, I, yeah, I love your um, I love your uh, reading faces uh, training that you that you do. It's uh, it's really quite good. And in, in, um, I know you're very good at reading faces and profile profiling because that's what you do for a living. And but your course, the seven steps that I think there are, or I, unless you've changed it since, um, take you through how a person just by the the look of their face, how their face is structured. Um, you know, the wrinkles on their, around their eyes or whatever can tell you so much about a person. And, um, you know, I really do encourage you to, to seek Alan's course out because it's really worthwhile having. It, uh, it can help you in your personal life and your business life, especially when you, you've got that little bit of distrust with somebody. That's it. And I've got a free course that I can give to everybody as well as a, as a yeah, thank you for having me on the, you know, the show here as well. But when I talked about the seven secrets, the first three was you have to know yourself before you can worry about reading anybody else. You need to know your personality. You need to know where your strengths are and how you get triggered when you're under stress. Once you know that, and then you can read the other person is the second step. Now you know their personality. And the third step is change the way that you like to be spoken to to match the way that they want to be and need to be spoken to. Okay. Have you been thinking about starting a podcast? You can share your knowledge and expertise with people globally. Create original content that is completely unique from anything else out in today's market, not just in terms of style, but also perspective. And when we talk about revenue generating potential, well, let me tell you, it doesn't stop there. The time to start is now. You know that you should be doing it. However, many people are reluctant because they don't know how to produce it or what tools they need to do their podcast. Please feel free to email me at guest at talkingwiththeexperts.com today. And let's talk about how I can help you to build authority and credibility for your business through podcasting. Remember, don't wait for the opportunity, create it. It's a case of tuning your transmitter into their receiver. Because if you're talking at a different frequency, it's like you're talking uh, French and the other person talking Greek, you're not going to understand each other. So you've got to tune yourself in. And the only way you can do that is you've got to know where you are on the world scale, first of all, know where they are, and then know how much do I change myself from talking the way I like to be spoken to, to match the way that that person does. Is it down this way or is it down that direction, depending where I am on that world scale? And so once you do that, You've then got the connection. And at that point, if you're asking questions, as they say, the person who asks the most question wins. Now, I uh, do interviews with people and I can sit there for 45 minutes. And at the end of the interview, people say, oh, that's the best conversation I've ever had. And I go, check out the recording. You'll find that I 
introduced you at the beginning, asked you one question for the next 45 minutes, I've said nothing because I've asked enough, enough questions to get the person started and let their unconscious mind take the conversation where it needs to go. And so- I've been, I've been under your spell. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the pleasure to listen to your, you know, your story of your um, adult life and your child as a child. And by the way, to anybody who's listening to this, everybody who's come in and told their one-on-one -on -one story, it's been a gift to me because I've learned so much about people. It's taught me tolerance. It's taught me to understand that everybody has the emotions. Those four points I pointed out before about wearing masks and uh, uh, pretending they're not and being a, a, uh, uh, the sum of all of our experiences. That has get taught me a lot, which has allowed me then to understand people better, which means my relationships have got stronger. Yeah, I, I, I understand, um, you know, because I, I've noticed um, you grow a lot since we've known each other. We've known each other for a fairly long time now, and I've seen you grow so much in this last five years um, compared to where you were when we first met. Um, and you're right, you know, um, the, the interactions that you've had with um, the various peoples in, in the uh, in the campfire project and um, the we together it's really brought the best out in you i believe and it's with all those people they've you know they've shown me who they are and the depth of their personalities and in that i think we've all grown together and when other people are growing around you you grow faster yourself as well mm -hmm. say it's hashtag we together we're not in this on our own we are in it together and Absolutely. It's, we're a world, we're a world conglomerate really, aren't we? It's, it's just uh, some stand out lot more than others, a bit like a CEO and the, and the person who sweeps the floors in the factory. So, yeah. so people don't seem to realise that when you grow yourself, everybody else around you grows as well. Now it's like, you know, the Campfire Project originally was to help boys in the manhood and then help men to become better men, become a man and not the man. And everyone said, well, you're putting all this effort on the men. And I go, yes, well, guess who the recipients of that are? It's their partners, it's their children, it's the communities. And the same thing, we've watched the women who have come in grow as well. And they've moved more to be a, a woman as opposed to be, trying to be the woman as well. Because when you're trying to be the, the end result is you're in competition with everybody, which is a pretty lo lonely and isolated place. But when you're trying to be a man and a woman, you know, people you want around you are people who are exactly the same, trying to do the same thing. Now you have a community. And Absolutely. that's what's happened within the Campfire Project. And that's why it's become a global community uh, in the uh, last three and a half years. Now, I, I do know that you are now a absolutely mega multi-award winner. You, <laughs> The man is like so famous for you know, all that he does, he just wins award after award after award. What is the latest that, um, that you've won? Oh, the last two uh, at the end of last year was the um, silver in the um, uh, social change maker for Australia and uh, the uh, gold in the um, man of influence for Australia. Yes, but I know, very, very well um, deserved. And, you know, so, so much congratulations to you for, for being there, being on top of it, it's, it's, I know it's been a little bit of a challenge, but honestly, people obviously appreciate what you do for them and, um, you know, what you, the value that you bring to, to other people's lives. It's, it's a, it's a it kudos to you. It wouldn't have happened without the people around me because it started out, first of all, with a lot of uh, finalists and then uh, education business of the year and then the overall business of the year for Australia and New Zealand that moved into business person of the year. It's, um, you know, because of the people who have stepped up in the Campfire Project, last year I was able to be interviewed 91 times around the world on podcasts and uh, radio shows and on TV stations. And uh, all of that was possible because of the team that I've had around me. As I said, as a leader, by helping them to come up and take on those roles, and in fact, a lot of them are doing them better than I do, which gives me a lot of pride, by the way. I don't feel challenged by it at all. It means that you know, um, I've had that impact. It's allowed me to go on and uh, create some more things. I've spent a lot of time on men's forums and mental health forums, leadership forums around the world. That could not have happened without the team I had around me to 
give me that opportunity to be able to step up and do those things because they stepped up and took those roles on for me. What are your latest projects, Alan? We've just uh, picked up a sponsor for the Campfire Project, so we've got a new web page on there. Uh, my target in the business side of things is to create and train my competition. And again, uh, two other people in the Campfire Project who I've known for a long time, who work together with me in collaboration, we've put together a course. We've now just had it certified as a professional development program for all, across all industries for Australia and Asia. And uh, the next thing is to put my rest of my courses through, including my master course. And then looking at, uh, there's a possibility of having it, uh, that one in particular, to be picked up as a degree. And also then you know, versions of that being a, um, uh, a diploma and also a Cert four course. And, wow, uh, that's amazing. The, the one that you know, really uh, has got me um, uh, excited is that about well, my granddaughter is uh, my oldest granddaughter is 13 years old. Two years ago, she uh, decided she wanted to learn how to read people. So she started uh, doing that. We uh, got together on the weekends over uh, Zoom and she's uh, contributed to my new master manual, quite a bit of text in there. And she's now my business partner at the age of 13, creating a couple of um, projects. One of them is a set of flashcards. So that like deck of cards with a picture on the front, label on uh, what trait we're looking at on the face and on the back, how to read that trait, how that person likely is likely to respond and how to uh, talk to them. Wow, and that'd be good for teenagers, wouldn't it? Yeah, she's done the back of all those uh, cards. Wow. I keep telling her I've got the hard job. I'm finding the photographs and telling her what trait we're going to be looking at. <laughs> it's, <laughs> Yeah, I'm really chuffed with the fact really good that... good in schools, you know, to, to mm. teach, um, um, you know, um, safety, mm. predators and all that sort of a thing. You know, you learn to read someone's face because you can't, there's just certain emotions you can't hide. Yeah, well, that's it. And for uh, before her, there were two young fellows that I trained. One was 14, one was 15. And I asked the 14-year-old uh, um, how he was using it. And he said, uh, with a very cheeky look on his face, he was profiling the teachers. And I said, how's that working for you? He was, oh, he says, I've been, you know, I know which ones to pick on and that. I'm stirring them more than I've stirred them before. I'm getting in nowhere near as much trouble. And as I said to him, it was probably not a marketing tool I can use at the moment. But the 15-year-old, when I asked him, he said, well, I'm profiling all of the other students. And I said, well, how's, what's, how's that going? He said, I now understand them. And I went, well, what are you getting from that? He said, tolerance. So this is one of the reasons I want to get it into schools. I want to get it into the hands of the kids so that they can, because they will lead the way. And once they start using the flashcards and understanding each other, we'll find that that will reduce the bullying. The only problem it might cause is like the 14-year-old, if they all know how to read the teachers, the teachers better get in and do the course real fast or otherwise the kids will be controlling the classroom. Oh, haven't they always controlled the classroom, though? <laughs> yeah, well, where the teacher's yelling at them, they probably won't get the chance to yell at them. The kids will just be laughing too much. So Absolutely. they'll all have to get the teachers in to uh, do the courses. Absolutely. Ellen, where can people find you if they want to work with you? The best way is through my website, which is just my name, alanstevens.com.au. And that's Alan with A-L-A-N and Stevens with a V, S-T-E-V-E-N-S. They go into there. I always tell people, go and have a look, first of all, at the, um, uh, the success story page and you'll find out how other people have used it in different areas of their life and how you can apply it. If you also use that website, alanstevens.com.au, and then the forward slash and the word free, F-R-E-E, -E, that'll uh, redirect to my training platform where they can download that free course and they can have a play with that. Yeah, it's a really good course. I really, I really enjoyed doing it. It was great. Um, Alan, you have, do you have any words of wisdom that you'd like to share with our listeners and viewers today? Well, there's two things. These are two uh, philosophies I've lived by. The first one was the most important thing you'll ever learn is the next thing you learn after you think you know everything. Always keep an open mind. I know that uh, the Arabic saying is um, trust everybody, but lock up your camels at night. And that virtually means listen to what everybody's got to say, but use your own judgment on it. So everything I've talked about today, that's why I say go and do the free course, because that way you'll know after you apply it yourself how well it works. 
But the main one is what you do for yourself dies with you, but what you do for others and for the community isn't always will be eternal. And so if you live by those two, you'll, you won't go wrong. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's always better to give than receive. That's what I, my philosophy on life. So, yeah, that's it. Alan, I, it's been an absolute pleasure once again to have you on. I, I could talk to you all day. I mean, it's just... You know I can talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> all right well if you as i said please i encourage you to go and seek out the campfire project on facebook um and uh, and mm -hmm. and uh, apply to become a member it's a really safe space for for people to be um and just get to know other like-minded individuals and yeah and get a one-on-one -on -one with um one of alan uh, either with alan or, or one of his team they are uh really worthwhile doing it's um and the it, quickest way to find it now is through the website which is the campfire project.com.au and that'll tell them all about the, the facebook page and how to join the facebook page oh perfect righty thank you for that alan it's been a pleasure thank you so much for your time today thank you very much you've been listening to talking with the experts hosted by rose davidson Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking with the Experts.